So what I'm going to do, first of all, you can see that stations and data are over here. And there are, so stations are represented by green circles and the study area is represented by a pink polygon. So if you click on this pink polygon, on the right hand side, you can change the symbology. You can change the symbol instead of pink polygon. For example, you can make it yellow or industrial or education or whatever you want. What I'm interested in is in, is in this dashed black outline. You can be interested in whatever else. You can also change this too. So right now I'm in gallery mode. If you go to properties, you can change the color of this dashed line to red, for example. And then you can change the width of that to two, for example, and then click apply. You can see the dashed line is now red and a little bit thicker. All right. So another thing that I want to change in the sim is the symbology of the green points, the stations. So I'm going to click on this symbol to modify it and then go to gallery. Now you can see that I can choose what I want to do with that. I can select a triangle, for example, or I can select a circle. I like this circle one, the size is good, but I don't like the color. So to change the color, I will go to properties and change the color to something maybe like this, a little bit lighter. Let's see how it turns out to be. Uh, I don't like it. I'm gonna change it to, um, this color and then apply better but I think black was the best so I'm gonna change it back to black okay now these are my stations but what kind of stations what data do they have over here so if you go over the stations and right click on your station there is one option called attribute table if you click on attribute table a table will open over here that show you the data behind these points and you can see the data is temperature in degrees centigrade, in degrees Celsius. Now, so now I know that these points <clears throat> are temperature stations. My goal is to create a continuous map of temperature over my study area. To do that, as I showed you before, you can use different statistical and averaging methods. The method that I'm going to use is IDW, inverse distance weight. And doing that is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is first close this symbology. I don't need it. And then go into this analysis tab, click on tools. You will see this will open over here. So if you go under toolbox, there are different toolboxes that we can use we are interested in spatial analyst, spatial analyst tools. If you extend that, there should be one option called interpolation. Interpolation, then extend that. These are all different methods that ArcGIS Pro gives you for interpolating these points into a map. I'm gonna use IDW. IDW is uh, inverse distance weighted method. So click on IDW. And after a couple of seconds, you'll be prompted to fill the information. What are my input features? Input features are stations. Automatically, the Z value, which is the value that I want to interpol interpolate, is temperature. So I'm not going to change that. Output raster. Output raster, you can change the name of it. Make sure to change the name of it, not the directory. So the directory is the directory that you save your project. I'm going to change only the name, the last part, to IDW. I'm going to remove that. Output cell size is the cell size of the raster. You don't need to change that. This power is the power of the IDW method that I talked about. And basically, you don't need to change anything over here. The only thing that I want you to do is go to this environment tab over here, click on it, and then under mask, click on the drop down and select study area. What it does is basically uses your study area as a cookie cutter to make sure that the map is not gonna extend over your study area. Once this is done, click on run and execute tool over here. 
and after a couple of seconds you will have a continuous map of temperature in your study area. All right, so as you can see, these values are the values of temperature. For example, dark green means that the temperature is less than or equal to 18 degrees Celsius. Then white means that the temperature is uh, less than or equal 20, 24 degrees Celsius. Now, just to try different parameters, go to these parameters again, and this time try to change this number instead of two, change it to five, okay? What this does is, right now the map is very smooth, right? It flows very smoothly. What this does, when you change this power number to five, it creates different bull's eyes in your map, okay? Now, let's run the model again, so I changed it to five, I'm gonna run it again, and automatically it's going to replace your map after a couple of seconds, there we go. Do you see these bullseyes in the map? So the power of IDW changes the accuracy of your spatial map. I'm gonna keep it as it is, five is good for me. But you can play with this more to find out which one, which one actually more accurately describes your uh, study area and that depends on the number of stations that you have which is beyond the scope of this course and I'm not going to talk about. So now what I'm going to do is to create maps based on the maps based on these that I have created and save it save it as PDF. So to do that it's very easy right now you have only one map tab over here right what we are going to do, we are going to insert, so we are going to go to insert tab, and we are going to insert a layout. So we are going to click on a new layout, and it asks you about your paper size, right? We are gonna save it as PDF, so we need to have the paper size. Because my map is kind of horizontal, I'm gonna select letter, and but in a landscape mode. So select that, and when you do that, you can see that a layout tab pops up right next to your map tab. So this is your paper basically. Now, we don't have any map on this. We need to create that. To do that, we need to click on the map frame, click on this triangle over here, and you will see that your map is kind of over here. Click on that, and your cursor changes when you are on the paper. Draw a frame like this. I'm drawing a frame and let it go. And this is your map on the paper. Now, what are the essential parts of a map? The essential parts of the map are north arrow, scale, and legend. And when you are in the layout uh, view, there is a tab called format. Under the, okay, so when you actually, that was not what I wanted to do. Wait a second. Uh, there we go. So. There's a map called format that it gives you the ability to format this page. We're not going to talk about that right now. We are going to do everything in the insert button. So basically, we are going to insert, first of all, a north arrow. If you click on this uh, black triangle over here, you'll see that you have plenty of options for north arrow. My favorite, personal favorite is this one, so I'm going to use that one. When you click on that, again, you will see that your cursor changes to a plus sign and it will you give you ability to draw something like this that shows your north arrow. Okay, what else I'm going to add? I'm going to add a scale bar. Again, clicking on the black triangle, there are different options for um, scale bar. I am going to select, um, well, which one is good? This one, for example. And then again, you my cursor changes. I will select this area for my um, scale bar. And the last thing that you need to add to your map is legend. So click on legend and again, draw a box. And this would be your legend over here. But look at it. Our legend is very ugly right now. So I need to change something to make it a little bit more beautiful. The problem is that I don't like this symbology for my map. To change the symbology for the map, right click on the name of the map, IDW, right click on that, and click on symbology. On the right hand side of your page, you can change the symbology. What I want to do is click on the primary symbology, 
and instead of classify, I'm going to click, click on stretch. Click on stretch. Now, you can see that my color scheme is black and white. Select your favorite color scheme. Let me show you my favorite color scheme. It is, where is it? Okay, it's over here. From It's red, yellow, blue. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. You'll see that it changes. However, now look at your um, symbology for the map. It changed to something stretched. This is way better. However, the lower temperature is represented by red and the higher temperature is represented by blue. I don't like that. Usually, higher temperature is red and lower temperature is blue. To change that, you just need to click on this again and go to Format Color Scheme. Click on Format Color Scheme and we need to basically reverse color scheme. So click on the reverse color scheme. You can see now blue is on the left hand side and red is on the right hand side. Click OK. Ta-da. Now, lower temperatures are blue, higher temperatures are red. Now, another thing that I want to change that I don't like is the fact that it says IDW and value, but what are the units for the value? What this what does this IDW map represent? So I need to change that. To change that, you simply need to change the name of your layer over here. So you have different, if you double click on it, there is the layer properties pops up and you can change the name to, because this is temperature, I'm going to say temperature and click OK. Now you can see the name here changed and also the name on your legend changed to temperature. But instead of value, I wanna I wanna actually mention the um, units of that, which was degrees uh, Celsius. So I double click on values again, and it should be selected when you double click on it. It's not selecting. If okay, so for me, for oh there we go. Right now, it's a it has a lag actually. So I'm double click on it, and it has a lag, and then it will be it will let you to rename it. See, let's after a couple of seconds it pops up. Uh, there's a significant lag and that's because I am recording myself if well the easiest way is right click on it and go to properties and then if you go to hmm it's not actually over here you cannot change it from here this is a new option so stick with the double clicking so I'm gonna double click until this allows me to change the name of it to rename it which is not doing it right now for me. Is there any rename button over here? I don't see it at least. Let me pause the video, I'll figure it out and I'll resume. Okay, I'll figure it out. The thing is, it's not double click, it's triple click. So you need to like left click on the value like for multiple times like this. I did like for four times. There we go. Okay. So let's do it again to show you. So if you click on the value for like four times, like very fast. There we go. It and then you can change it to degrees Celsius and then enter. Now when you do that, you can see that it changes over here too. Now one thing that I forgot is parentheses. So I'm going to actually change, add the, these to it as well, make it a more professional. Okay, so in my layout over here, you can see that I have stations, study area, temperature. Because my background is kind of light, every everything is readable over here. However, sometimes if your background is dark, you cannot read the, le the um, legend. To change that, you need to just select this layout and then go to format. And, uh, well, or basically, if you double click on your layout, the legend format uh, appears on the right hand side. And, um, if you go under the display tab, you can change the background color from no background to something like white. So, and you can see that now the background color of the legend area is white. So it's more uh, readable. 
if you don't want to do that that's okay too right for me i don't need to do that because um uh, honestly it's it's already uh, good and i can read it so i don't need to do that but i just wanted to show you how it's done okay now let's say that you have everything ready this map has all necessary uh, components and it's ready to be exported as a PDF once you've done that there is a button called share and then you can share your layout or export your layout using this button over here it will ask you where do you want to save it I want to save it on my desktop for example and then export it it says that I already have a PDF called layout but that's okay for me I'm gonna just redo it and then my my map is exported as a PDF let me see if I can open it and show it to you so here it is that's the PDF that I created for Colorado so this was basically a very quick example of how to use stations to create a map and then export your map in a PDF uh, from ArcGIS Pro. Remember that my intent is not to teach you ArcGIS here. My intent is to teach you how to use ArcGIS to create IDW maps. Um, now, what you're going to do after this is very simple you are going to use the other folder that I have uploaded on Canvas and it's called um, Minnesota. In that folder, again, you have a set of stations and you have a study area. Your study area is a watershed in Minnesota and the points are uh, rain gauges, rain stations. What I want you to do is to perform a similar analysis that I did in this video and create the map of IDW map of those stations. So remember that those stations are not temperature. Those are rainfall stations, okay? Or to, in other words, precipitation stations, not just rainfall, precipitation stations. So you need to create a map like this for the other set of data that I have posted on Canvas, and that would be your homework. One thing that I forgot to mention is how to add a title to this page. To add a title to this page, again, you need to go under Insert tab and then create a rectangular text. So I'm going to create on the, click on the rectangle and then create this rectangle over here and then write out the title. This is the average temperature in the month of August. So I'm going to write average temperature August 2020. Now, so I can change this to make it larger. If I go under format, I can make this larger. Let's make it like 28 points large. This is good. Make it a little, there we go. And then make it bold. And you can actually play with that to make sure it's how you want to how you want it to be. I'm going to put it right in the middle over here. And this is basically how you add text. You can change the color to the color that you want. Uh, you can change the font to something else. And yeah, so basically this is how you add any different text on your map. And then again, going under share and click on layout to save save it with a title. It is important for your map to have a title too. This is another uh, characteristic of a good map.